later, we will also have the press launch of our new syntax advocacy video featuring one of the champions in the legislature, Ang Pambansang Kamao, Senator Manny Pacquiao, and one of the health department's most infamous villains, uh, Yossi Kadiri. Uh, my co-moderator this afternoon is Ms. Monchet Larano, also from the Department of Finance. Thank you, Asik Todi. Public attention right now. Recently concluded midterm elections. With the 17th Congress resuming in a few days for its final session, we believe this is also a good time to shift our focus towards an important legislative measure, one that underscores the Duterte administration's commitment of ensuring sufficient and sustained funding for universal health care program. We are fortunate to have with us today our Honorable Secretaries, Health Secretary Francisco Duque III and Finance as panel members for this press conference. To provide context on the funding government in implementing the universal health care, we would like to call our Secretary of Health, Dr. Francisco T. Duque, to deliver his opening statement. Okay. Department of Finance uh, Secretary uh, Carlos Sani Dominguez III, the uh, officials of the Department of Finance, our Okay, our friends from uh, media, I'd like to uh, greet all of you in behalf of the Department of Health, a uh, most pleasant uh, afternoon. And uh, we uh, are uh, here uh, in, in today's joint uh, press conference. In 2040, we envisioned the Philippines to be among the healthiest in Asia. This will only be possible if one, we keep all Filipinos healthy and obviously, and two, we provide quality and affordable health care to those who get sick. These two are also the very same reasons why we need to increase tobacco and alcohol excise taxes once more. Syntax is first and foremost a health measure. This is not rocket science. When the prices of cigarettes and alcohol are higher, it is harder, especially for the youth, to buy this very harmful. You know, in these same products less affordable to consumers. Our first attempt was indeed effective. There was a significant reduction in smoking prevalence after the same tax law of 2012 was first implemented. However, Prevalence has already plateaued. We are putting 250,000 Filipino lives at risk every year. It is time for another round. Fortunately for us, too, the revenues gathered from seen taxes provide the much needed financing to realize our much needed health reforms. More people, especially the poor, are now covered by our program. It also enabled us to scale up our non-communicable disease prevention services, among others. They have also been used to assist our tobacco farmers. The recent signing of the universal health care law the blueprint for reforming the health system is now very much in place. Accounting for our priorities and collectively, the DOH and PhilHealth need a total of 258 billion to improve our health insurance coverage and expand our benefit packages. We need to secure sufficient and sustained resources to ensure that the health system 
will be set up and transformed as envisioned in the next 10 years. And over the last eight months, we have gathered the support and approval of our proposal from the members of the cabinet and most important of all, from President Rodrigo Duterte himself. The DOH and DOF represent the solid voice of the executive branch in this measure. We are indeed grateful to our partners and staunch advocates, the civil society organizations, medical community, and members of both houses of Congress as well. In the recent Pulse Asia survey, this showed that the three out of four Filipinos agreed that tobacco taxes should be raised. There is clearly a demand from the people to get this done. We now patiently await for the release of the Senate Committee on Ways and Means report. With nine days remaining in the 17th Congress, there is still time to collectively take action. And we look forward to the support of our counterparts in the legislature during this crunch time. This is the final round. So, kailangan tapusin na natin ang boxing, ika nga. Maraming salamat. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Secretary Duque. And now, we uh, invite Secretary Carlos Dominguez for his opening statement. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, Phil Health Executive Vice President uh, Ruben John Basa, fellow workers in government, friends in media. The Duterte administration is committed to making quality health care accessible to all Filipinos, as the President promised in his zero to ten point socioeconomic agenda in 2016. Now that the President has signed the universal health care into law, we need to make sure that this unprecedented investment in Filipino people's health is funded sustainably. The universal health care program will provide coverage to all law-abiding Filipinos, reducing vulnerability lowering out-of-pocket expenses, and improving the quality of life. The passage of, a higher, of higher excise taxes on tobacco and alcohol products will provide the government with the means to curb vices and undesirable behavior, while at the same time generate the revenues to fully fund uni the universal health care program. We have done the math. We can do both. Sin taxes are not whimsical impositions by greedy governments. Such taxes are carefully calibrated according to the social costs incurred by the consumption of certain products. In many countries, the total tax on tobacco products accounts for at least 70 to 75 percent of retail prices. If we get the rates correct, taxing sin products works. The 2012 sin tax law succeeded in reducing smoking prevalence from 29% in 2012 to 22.7% in 2015. However, recent polling shows that smoking prevalence has again began to increase reaching 23% in 2018. This is a warning sign. With the rise of incomes and slower increases in tobacco taxes over the last few years, tobacco has again become affordable to the youth and the average Filipino. The deterrent effects of the original excise taxes have been eroded. If we do not regularly update our rates to address this reality, 
we run the risk of reversing previous gains. On the other hand, for alcoholic products, the 2012 sin tax law did not raise excise taxes to the level that both fiscal and health authorities deemed ideal. As a result, the prevalence of binge drinking among regular consumers continues to rise. The deterrent effect of sin taxes on alcohol products has not been achieved. If we do not significantly raise excise taxes on tobacco and alcohol, the universal health care program will begin with both a funding gap and, and the prospect of ballooning costs due to alcohol and tobacco related diseases. Our estimates show that in 2020, the first year of impl implementation of the universal health care, it will cost approximately 258 billion pesos. From the present sources of funding, including the national budget, G Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, or PAGCOR, and the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office, or PCSO, the government will raise around 195 billion pesos for this program. Without sin tax reform, the program will be left with a funding gap of around 62 billion pesos. Uh, the numbers are here on the board. Huh? From 2020 to 2024, all current sources of government funding can cover around 200 billion pesos annually or a total of 1 trillion pesos. While the cost of the universal health care program will continue to grow to as much as 144 trillion pesos. Without the sin tax reform, the cumulative funding gap by 2024 will stand at 426 billion pesos or about one third of the total cost. If we do not establish new sources of revenue, we will not have enough funds to properly fully implement universal health care and ensure a better quality of life for all Filipinos. The funding gap can be fully covered if we increase excise taxes on tobacco and alcohol to at least the rates proposed by Senator Pacquiao. Allow me to give you a snapshot of the situation we are facing today. Without sin tax reform at the current premiums, Philippine health members will only continue to be covered for 18 primary care drugs and seven conditions. They will continue to shoulder 90% of the cost of the prescribed medicines. With sin tax reform, the coverage will improve to 120 drugs. There will be no limit to primary care consultations. DOH wisely proposes that medicine pur purchases will be limited to a fixed fee, the cost of the transaction alone. These are some of the specific benefits that Filipinos will receive under full implementation of the program. The Department of Finance and the Department of Health have presented the facts on this issue to the President and the rest of the Cabinet. We were given clear and urgent instructions. Tax alcohol and tobacco at higher rates than current levels and fund universal health care beginning this year. In last year's State of the Nation address, President Duterte urged Congress to act on both reforms in alcohol and tobacco taxes as well as health care. It has always been the President's goal to ensure every Filipino family receives appropriate, affordable, and quality health services. We thank Senators Ejercito, Gachalian, and Pacquiao for championing significant increases in sin taxes ranging from 60 to 90 pesos per pack. It will support our desired public health outcomes. We also thank Senator Angara for moving the reform forward. The entire cabinet has re recommended the swift passage of Senate Bill 1599 of Senator Manny Pacquiao. 
The President has also agreed to certify the Senate bill as urgent. There are three section weeks left after the elections. We urge both houses to give due priority to this reform. Approve the Senate version in the bicameral conference and ratify it immediately. Our universal health care program by design is at par with the world's best health care systems. This is truly a generous gift to the Filipino people, helping to create the best conditions for human development. However, quality health care is not free. It costs huge sums of money. It will not be sustainable if we do not create the means to fund it. This does not require a complex algorithm. It's simple arithmetic. And we already have done the calculations for you. Tax cigarettes at 60 pesos per pack and alcohol at 40 pesos per liter at least. Thank you and good day. Thank you very much, Secretary Dominguez. And now we formally begin our open forum. We would like to request our friends from the media to kindly state your name and affiliation before asking questions. We have representatives from PhilHealth. Uh, if you have any questions, they can answer immediately. <laughs> Thank you. So questions, please. Yes, please. Chino Leiko. Hi, good afternoon. Chino Leiko, Manila Bulletin. Okay. Question is, uh, are you confident that uh, the House and the Senate will uh, pass this bill less than uh, within the three sessions, uh, three week sessions of the Well, uh, it's very difficult to second guess uh, what's in the mind of uh, our uh, legislators. But we hope and pray that they see the light uh, of uh, day and, uh, and really support the uh, president's legacy for the Filipino people. And one of his legacies is really to not just to pass the UHC, uh, bill now signed into law, of course, but to implement this and implementing this must necessarily uh, address the funding gaps. No? So I suppose that uh, well-meaning senators and uh, representatives uh, do share this uh, sense of legacy uh, with the president and uh, it's for our people. It's, uh, it's been a long time since uh, we have uh, really aspired for this as uh, uh, way back in 1978, the Alma-Ata Declaration, uh, which went kaput. And so uh, times have uh, changed, uh, years, decades have passed, and uh, we have seen witness to the improvements in the health delivery infrastructure, which means our hospitals, our uh, uh, RHUs, our health stations, but of course the uh, stages are of development are uh, variable. And uh, one major building block, I believe, that has uh, contributed to the realization uh, of the law is uh, the universal health insurance coverage of 1995. So I think that's is a very important uh, component of the universal health care. So it's not as if uh, UHC is just going to happen the moment the president uh, had signed uh, the bill into law, but really this is a summation uh, of all the efforts of previous administrations. No? But uh, certainly it uh, deserves to underscore the fact that it is the president President Rodrigo Duterte, among all other presidents that have exercised sheer political will to shepherd his allies in Congress to approve the bill and ultimately sign it into law. Questions, please. 
follow up. Hello. Anyway, Secretary Dominguez, you said that uh, you you want the Senate version to be adopted by the by Congress. So I presume you now know the rate under the committee report of the Senate. I beg your pardon. I know the what. Well, you, you now. I presume that you know you know now the the rates under the Senate uh, committee report. Yes, the rates are basically sixty pesos per per uh, pack and the 40 pesos per liter for alcohol. That's the under the committee report of the Senate Ways and Means? That's, that's, that's your proposal. That's but proposal. What's, the, what's under the Senate uh, Ways and Means committee I, I report? I really don't know. I, I don't know the, the results. But this is what we are proposing. And on your first question, uh, you asked if... Uh, if the, we are confident that the House and the Senate will pass it. You know, the House and the Senate are really representatives of the people, and they are elected directly by the citizens. And I think they, they know how to read uh, what has happened recently. Uh, the, the, uh, the national candidates that the president uh, endorsed all one except for one. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, and I think as representatives of the people, they should uh, recognize that uh, that is uh, the will of the people is basically uh, affirming the leadership and the programs of uh, President Duterte. So I believe that the House and the Senate will uh, take that into consideration and will come to the conclusion that the bill that he, ha that he will uh, designate as urgent will be passed. What will gonna happen, last question, what will gonna happen to, the, to, to our finances if this bill hindi magpasa, hindi mapaas within the year and you have a funding gap of 62 billion come 2020? Paano nyo isa-sourcing 62 billion? Are you planning to cut down some expenses to cover the UH universal health care? Well, the universal health care is designed to be funded by the SIN taxes. So if uh, the bill is not passed, if the bill that uh, uh, 1599, uh, Senate Bill 1599 is not passed, then we cannot fully implement the universal health care program. There will be gaps. And gaps mean some people will not be served. Or some, uh, not only that some people will not be served, uh, some of their, maybe all of them will be served, but not all the intended expenses will be covered. So that will happen. Questions? So, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Mikael Flores of Nikkei Asian Review. Uh, Secretary Duque, how much do you project smoking incidents to increase if for every year that uh, syntax law is not passed? Because you've mentioned that, that the reduction has already plateaued. And second, um, we, you mentioned there's a, Secretary Dominguez mentioned that there's a 62 billion shortfall. So uh, in the, what, what's the contingency measure? Which aspect or which pillar of the UHC will have to be sacrificed, um, especially in the aspect, I think, of primary care because that's, that's where the weakness of the Philippine health system is. Okay, two yeah. questions, right? The first question was how, by how much will really the prevalence increase? It's already showed that it increased from 22.5% to 23%, uh, and that's in a very short period of time. Okay, uh, so you just figure out that maybe it will increase by a factor of one half of one percent or one three fourths of one percent every year. So it will take no time to get back up to twenty nine percent. Now the second uh, point you made is uh, what will not be served. I said either of two things. Okay, either not enough people will be served, right? Or all people will be served, but not all the requirements. 
Di ba? Ganun yan. Okay. Uh, for the DOH part, uh, what we'll give, obviously, will be the... Uh, what will be sacrificed, rather, would be the provision of primary care uh, to our people. And uh, you see the contemplation under the universal health care law is to shift focus from a highly hospital-oriented specialty care-centric uh, uh, type of uh, service. Uh, we would like to move it down to the lower level uh, delivery units which are expected to provide primary care. Perhaps uh, for the better understanding of uh, the media, primary care is uh, uh, a very important component of UHC because it is what takes care of the services uh, that will allow for health promotion uh, so that people uh, will be more health literate, they'll understand what it means to have a healthy lifestyle. Uh, it, the preventive care services are uh, part and parcel of uh, primary care. In the continuum of care, you begin with the health promotion, disease prevention or wellness preservation, to treatment, cure, rehabilitation, and palliation. So the universal healthcare law contemplates that the services are provided along this, uh, what I would term as the service delivery networks. Okay, so uh, the focus of the universal healthcare now, or the priority is to establish more delivery units within the public sector uh, healthcare provider network. Ang problema po sa atin sa Pilipinas, ang kahinaan ng ating serbisyong pangkalusugan ay tukoy o kinikilala natin ang lower level, the downstream uh, service delivery capacity is anemic. Okay? And one of two things may happen here. Either the patient, because there is no uh, facility, that is directly accessible within the community, the tendency is for them to go straight to the hospitals. No? And that's bad because uh, any condition, especially if it's not major, you treat it in a hospital, your cost escalates. Okay? Now, the other thing is, which is more unfortunate, is for the patient to just wait it out until his or her condition deteriorates. And by the time it deteriorates and he is transported to the nearest hospital, along the way, the patient either dies or dies on arrival in the emergency room. So these are really compelling reasons uh, that have inspired our leaders and our president to really pass this law. And so uh, if we don't have enough funding to support this, to sustain this, then again, it will frustrate our people because they've been expecting that the lower, the downstream uh, level uh, facilities won't be there because the costings that have been made by the Department of Finance and DOH clearly uh, illustrates the funding requirement for the full development of our primary care uh, facilities. Okay, that's po possibly close to about 60, 40, 50, 60 billion. No? Uh, and part of the rates, the premium rates uh, under the PhilHealth will be used precisely to fund the primary care benefit package. Now, status quo tayo, kung hindi tayo magtataas ng buwis, eh, it's more of the same. So, we need to do a lot more capacity building uh, in the primary care facilities. And you know, in uh, the Philippines, 
out of the 42,000 barangays, for example, we only have less than half that has uh, health stations. Okay, so there's a huge uh, gap that we need to address. So an adequate uh, funding uh, should be able to sustain uh, the healthcare provider networks. Last two questions, please. Yes. Ah, okay, follow up. Just a short follow up. Uh, Secretary Duque, where are you at with the IRR of the UHC? I understand you have 180 days, but you plan to finish uh, earlier than what the law has uh, set for the DOH? Well, that was wishful thinking <laughs> at first. But as uh, we have been uh, uh, conducting uh, the TWG meetings, uh, it looks like that many gray areas are uh, surfacing uh, from the provisions of the UHC law. And so it, it, we will need more time to uh, put clarity to this uh, rather uh, vague, if not uh, fussy, uh, provisions of the law. And we need to do more uh, public consultations. We hope to come up with a draft one by end of May. And then uh, after that, we will conduct public consultations. And uh, you know, there are uh, uh, several uh, stakeholders no, uh, of uh, the health sector. Uh, and so we need to get them on board, but uh, I'm confident we will be able to manage them. And uh, hopefully, in accordance with the law, we should be able to come up with the IRR by September. Sir, could you say uh, which, uh, which, of, which provisions of the law did you find some gray areas or some fuzzy? Um you know, I don't want to take that up here because that's rather granular. Uh, but let me just give you an example. It's really the human resource uh, that we might need to move from the municipal uh, local government units uh, of, of their health programs uh, to the uh, provincial uh, uh, local government uh, units. Uh, and uh, the integration contemplated under the UHC law will be a health system uh, local health system that's going to be uh, operated and controlled by the provincial leadership. So, ang tanong, paano yung mga empleyado, health workers, doon sa municipal LGUs, what will happen to them? Should we move them up uh, to the provincial local government units? It's one of those uh, a bit uh, difficult issues that we have uh, discovered. Um, hi, sir. I'm Claire Yao from Bloomberg. Um, some companies have already talked about their plans to bring in new tobacco products like heat, not burn tobacco within the year in the Philippines. Um, it's not included in the current syntax framework. Is this something the DOF and the DOH are already talking about and how you could possibly tax it in the future? And what kind of provisions are you looking at and how this could be taxed? Uh, yes. Uh in fact, uh, yesterday I got a letter from uh, one of the companies saying that they are already going to be introducing a, a product here. And uh, we are in conversation with the uh, DOH on how to, uh, how to handle this. I mean, there are several ways to handle it, and uh, uh, we're still at, uh, trying to figure out exactly what would be the most appropriate way. Uh, as you know, there are several kinds of uh, tobacco products, right? One is you heat it, right, but don't burn. Right? Another one is you uh, you this you have a you vape it, right? So uh, here we're trying to see, you know, first of all, where the technology is, where it's going and uh, how to address it. But definitely, uh, I think there will be regulation uh, and taxation involved. Uh, I understand that in other countries, they have introduced products that taste like mango or taste like candy. And uh, I think uh, that's something we have to address because that, that's apparently designed to entice young people 
to start the nicotine habit, right? So we are we are in discussions on this. Well, uh, just just to respond to that question, no? the uh, FDA has been tasked to uh, come up with the administrative order uh, for the uh, electronic uh, nicotine delivery system and equally for the uh, electronic, electronic non-nicotine delivery system. So uh, there was an attempt, well, actually there was an AO that was issued in 2014, but once we uh, undertook a review of this, uh, it looks like it's no longer, our, uh, it's not, it's been overtaken by uh, events and you know, the vaping, the uh, electronic, other electronic uh, delivery systems for both nicotine and non-nicotine products. Uh, the 2014 AO cannot address all of these new uh, techno technological developments. No, so we are reviewing it, and uh, in no time we will come up with uh, the draft IRR and uh, after that hopefully get to approve it uh, probably in about uh, three to six months time. So just to clarify, will companies have to wait for the draft IRR before getting approval to import these new tobacco products? Uh, well, I think uh, the DOF might be in a better position to uh, answer that. You know, at the moment there are very few regulations uh, regulating the importation of these products. So we are going to review it to see if uh, in fact uh, uh, they are enough to keep them out or to start regulating them. That's why uh, the DOF and, and uh, the Department of Health really have to study this because there's a lot of science we have to understand. There's a lot of uh, different technologies, and that technology is evolving, as you said, very quickly. In a period of five years, it's it's changed entirely. Used to come in the body vaping used to come with a big, uh, uh, like a big pot. Mm. It's, it's uh, just like a, a stick of cigarette. So or icos, yeah, the heating. So there. Okay, last question, Ben. I, I, sorry. Sir, uh, for Secretary Duque, I'm curious if uh, there had been any studies already on the use of vape or the electronic cigarettes. Or do they have the same impact on uh, uh, health, for example? And you know, there's a dearth of data with regard to that. That's why we need more studies, more research, and uh, our... Uh, Disease Prevention and Control Bureau of the DOH has been quite aggressive in uh, getting all the data uh, internationally, globally, and, and we have to learn from, from this. As we frame the regulatory, uh, the, as we uh, review and eventually issue the admin order uh, for this particular product, this will uh, have the benefit of uh, inputs from uh, international as well as local studies. Thank you, sir. And Secretary Dominguez, the bills passed in the lower house were uh, have lower rates than what the DOF had wanted. In case they, uh, uh, would, uh, would you be amenable to the, those uh, lower rates, for example, in the, for the tobacco and alcohol? Uh, we can show this in the board. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, can you flash? Uh, the, the bills uh, passed in the lower house will hardly make a dent mm -hmm. on, the, on the funding gap. Is, it, is that this? Here. So this is the lower house approved bill. So the funding gap is still quite high. Eh? You know, it's uh, 53 billion on the first, 56, 64, 71, and 80. Uh, that's hardly a dent. So we really need, as we said earlier, uh, we really need the, the, the 1599. Do you think the Senate can convince their lower house counterparts to uh, adjust it upward? And, uh, as I said, they are representatives of the people. And I've see, I think they are very keen 
on seeing the results of the people, people's will. And, in two, and a few days ago, the people spoke freely and very, uh, how would you say, very definitely that they support the president's candidates, they affirm his leadership, and they support his programs. And this is his program. But in the worst case that uh, they can no longer pass it given the very tight uh, schedule, is there a plan B like how soon or they have already sponsors for the 18th Congress in case uh, they can pass it in the 17th Congress? We don't have a plan B. All right. This is the only plan. Yes, and it is ready to be passed. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your questions. We now proceed to the second part of this event which is the formal launch of the Mani Pacquiao versus uh, Yossi Kadiri ad. Uh, this is for the Gen Xers and the Titos and Titas of Manila. Uh, I know you remember this ad very well, or this ad campaign. Uh, proving once again that he is a champion both in the boxing ring and in the legislature, Senator Pacquiao agreed to take on an old enemy of public health. No, re revived uh, for this campaign. We hope you enjoy this 32nd uh, championship match. Hindi pa tapos ang laban. Para to sa mga bataan malulong sa bisyo. Para sa mga nagdurusa sa sakit dulot ng yusip. Para sa mga naulilang pamilya. Protektahan ang kabataang Pilipino. Itaas ang buwis ng sigarilyo. Anyway, that's online through the DOH and the DOF uh, Facebook pages and other social media sites. But we uh, thought that uh, uh, since he has been able to recover... <laughs> and for this fight, the gloves are off. So can we request our secretaries to uh, knock out uh, Yossi Gadiri once again? <laughs> <laughs> Can we please request uh, John Ruben Basa to join the secretaries as well as uh, Narisa Santiago. Uh, John is the Executive Vice President and COO of PhilHealth and Narisa Santiago is Senior Vice President of PhilHealth. And Secreta Under Secretary Carl Chua of the DOF, please. <laughs> Okay, that, that, that concludes our event this afternoon. On behalf of the Department of Health and the Department of Finance, we wish to thank our resource persons and guests. We hope that with the help of the public, we will be able to impress on our colleagues in Congress the need to prioritize the enactment of Senate Bill Number 1599, filed by Senator Pacquiao. Thank you, and again, good afternoon.
Uh, for those who would like to punch Yossi Kadi